in the Big Bang, we know that matter and antimatter were created equally, and now there's no antimatter around. And so the big question is, where is it? What happened to it? And so I've spent 25 years doing research into looking at the difference between antimatter systems and matter systems to see if there's some system that can give us a clue as to how that happened. And this particular research is on anti-hydrogen, which is the antimatter twin of hydrogen. And we're looking at, in this particular case, the, the electric charge of, of the anti-hydrogen, because it should be exactly the same as the hydrogen, which is zero, neutral. Well, at the moment, we're the only people that can do this research. So it's, it, it adds, everything we do adds to the knowledge base of, of science. Um, and so we are going to continue on to, to test other aspects of anti-hydrogen versus hydrogen. And, and the reason we're using anti-hydrogen is because hydrogen is the most precisely measured system in science. And so if we can measure anti-hydrogen to the same precision, then we can make the most precise test of, of the antimatter-matter asymmetry. Yeah, it's a really an amazing collaboration because it has people with various different skill sets. And actually the, the head of the Canadian group asked me to join because I have a particular skill set working with something called silicon vertex detectors, uh, which no one else had. And so, you know, it was just adding one more piece to the, to the puzzle. They, there, was, there was not, I think, fair to say much of a reputation for York in, in my field, which is high energy physics. Uh, but since then, uh, the group has become quite a vibrant group and we're involved in experiments in Japan and in Europe um, and experiments that have won prizes, for example. So, and, and, and we've made contributions to those things too.